Hello everyone, here we are again with us the news, and this is the news for today. South Korean government repatriated remains of Chinese troops killed during Korean War to China. The ceremony of repatriation held at the Incheon International Airport, the remains of 117 Chinese soldiers killed in the 1950 up to 1953 Korean War. A plane dispatched by Chinese Air Force will transport the remains to the Shenyang Taoxiang International Airport in northeast China. It is the seventh repatriation following a handover agreement signed by the two countries. In 2014, South Korea agreed with China to repatriate the remains of fallen Chinese soldiers, according to international law and humanitarian spirit. From 2014 to 2019, South Korea returned the remains of 599 Chinese people's volunteers martyrs killed in the Korean War, including 437 in 2014, 68 in 2015, 36 in 2016, 28 in 2017, 20 in 2018, and 10 in 2019. The Chinese People's Volunteers fought alongside the troops of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea in Korean War against the South Korea Army and the United States-led UN forces between 1950 and 1953. China and Argentina stand ready to support WHO in fighting against COVID-19. During a telephone conversation with Argentine President Alberto Fernandez, Chinese President Xi Jinping says China is ready to work with Argentina and other members of the international community to firmly support the World Health Organization to fight against COVID-19. The COVID-19 pandemic is a severe test for the whole world. Chinese is willing to continue to provide as much as assistance as its capacity allows for the South American country and deep in bilateral vaccine cooperation. China attaches great importance to its relations with Argentina, supports the Argentine side, developing its economy and improving people's well-being, about the future cooperation between the two countries. Fernandez wishes the Chinese people a happy National Day. He says he listens carefully to Xi's speech at the general debate of the 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly and admires Xi's vision and commitment. Argentina hopes to deepen cooperation with China in a wide range of fields such as trade, investment, infrastructure and finance, and within the framework of the Belt and the Road Initiative. Argentina thanks China for providing support and assistance in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, opposes any attempts to politicize the disease, supports the WHO in playing a leading role, and hopes to continue to deepen vaccine cooperation with China. At least 900 million of internet users in China. According to a report on the country's internet development release, the number of the internet users in China hit 940 million. According to the 46th biannual statistical report from the China Internet Network Information Center, the country's internet availability rate to 67.0% with 30.4% of internet users living in rural areas. The report says that 932 million Chinese use mobile phones to surf the internet, such as using the network video reaches 888 million or 94.5% of the total internet users and 747 million people uses mobile phones to shop online. Youth activists held protests against climate change in Philippines. A dozen Filipino students activists held a protest inside a state university in Manila to commemorate a global call for a climate action. They paint a large mural symbolizing support from the world in action against the climate changes and against the controversial security law in the Philippines. Since we know that you know everyone has different ways of dealing with COVID-19 pandemic right now, not everyone can go and big strikes in the streets like we did last year in September when millions of youth and people went out into the streets. We've gotten a lot more creative. So in the Philippines, we had a mural with the earth and um, basically it's symbolizing how people across the world are uniting with the Philippines against the terror law that is threatening all kinds of activism, including climate activism and our environmental defenders. Human rights groups have raised concerns on a recently passed anti-terrorism law in Philippines, which they say will target activism and stifle free speech. Numerous petitions have been filled with the Supreme Court to try to block it. 
The global call for climate strike started in 2019 by Swedish activist Greta Thunberg, which aimed for students and youth groups around the world to voice out against the impending effects on climate change on the planet. Coronavirus infections are rising in Myanmar. Schools become quarantine areas. Tens of thousands of people are hospitalized or quarantined because they're close contacts and returning migrant workers. Even those with no symptoms or mild symptoms is a part of ambitious plans to stop the virus swamping. But health public expert and doctor says the strategy is on the brink of collapse as infections surge. Authorities order schools and temples to serve as quarantine centers, while hospitals struggle to cope with the high numbers. The patients were initially placed only at hospitals, but later five or eight people within the same family would be found to have infected with COVID-19 after a family member has been tested positive, so the hospitals are not capable to accommodate them. That's why we turned this school into a quarantine center during the school shutdown period with the cooperation of education authorities as the infection rate is getting higher. Other authorities say that select the school into a hospital because not have facilities like in hospitals. The selected centers, schools and temples are not facilitated like hospitals. We are not able to fully serve the people in the centers because we organize the centers in great urgency, as best as we could, to be in line with the protective measures. Related to this problem, officials from the health ministry did not answer calls seeking comment. According to the Ministry of Health, data has more than doubled from about 19,000 in August to more than 45,000 as of September. Authorities report 535 new infections and three deaths, making a total of 7,827 cases and 133 deaths. The Swabot company prepares automatic swab testing robot for COVID-19 tests in Singapore. A Singaporean company unveils an automated swab testing robot aimed to help the risks for healthcare workers amid the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, because we wanted to, there are, there are cohort ex uh, swabbing exercises going on now, so we wanted something to help with this cohort swabbing exercise in Singapore. Uh, and that was the reason why we came up with this idea. We wanted something that, that will save manpower um, and is less, uh, is, is less risky for healthcare workers. And we really didn't expect the the response to be so overwhelming. Yeah. The swap bot, which jointly with tech company Biobot Surgical PT Ltd, the National Cancer Center Singapore over four months, allow users to insert two plastic pieces into their nostril from where a swap stick is extends into their nasal cavity to collect a sample. The patient just has to place uh, his nostrils onto the swap bot and then self-activate it with his chin and the swap stick will go straight down his or her nose, twirl at the end of it uh, with no discomfort whatsoever and then retracts itself. So that's a very quick 20 seconds uh, swabbing exercise. The machine must be cleaned, maintained and refitted with swab sticks by human hands, but the rest of the 20 second procedure is completely automated. Professor Tang Yangchie and CCS says swapbot are developed to save manpower amid the mass COVID-19 swab testing being carried out across Singapore. Singapore testings for hundreds of thousands of migrant workers. The developer by what CEO Sim Kokwe says they plan to produce at least 100 units. I think we're, not, uh, we're not really waiting to collate all the inquiries. We're looking at um, going ahead with at least uh, 100 units to, to load uh, the contract manufacturer so that we can get it started. Um, and um, depending on who is uh, giving us a uh, who is sincere uh, and, and, uh, and, and we have to actually uh, ensure that the, uh, the distributors are, are authentic. This is not the first automated swap testing robot, as other companies such as Taiwan's Brain Navy have developed similar models. Brunei appreciates the United Nations on its 75th anniversary. The Prime Minister Hassan al-Bolkir applauds the achievements of the United Nations on the 75th anniversary, mentioning its achievements in resolving conflicts, but also calling it far from perfect. Over the years, we have faced many challenges and were able to resolve conflicts in Bosnia, Timor-Leste, and closer still to us, 
in ASEAN, in Cambodia. However, the question of Palestine, terrorism, achieving the sustainable development goals, and many others remain work in progress. And now, we are facing new unprecedented challenges in our lifetime, like climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic. If history has taught us anything, it is that we could not have realized such achievements without the strong support and commitment from all nations. Not by abandoning the UN when it becomes politically difficult, but by working together and by seeking convergence both at the national and international levels. The UN is far from perfect, and the cost of maintaining it continues to rise every year. The United Nations mark anniversary as the deadly coronavirus pandemic and tensions between the United States and China challenge the effectiveness and solidarity of the 193 member body. The special event comes ahead of the annual meeting of world leaders at the United Nations, which starts but no presidents or prime ministers physically present in New York. The United Nations was created when countries came together after World War II to prevent another such conflict where there has not been World War III, leaders adopt a statement acknowledging moments of disappointment. Thailand is taking legal action against Facebook and Twitter for not complying with court orders. Thailand begins legal action against Facebook and Twitter for they ignoring the requests to delete the content. It is a first move against major internet firms. This is the first time we are using the Computer Crime Act to take action against platforms with court orders, unless the company sent their representatives to negotiate or request further information, police can bring criminal cases against them, but if they do and acknowledge the wrongdoing, we can settle on fines. The government says file legal complaints with cybercrime police of the two social media companies misses the 15 days deadlines to comply fully with court issues takedown orders. It actions not to against Alphabet's Google only as suggest as it took down all the YouTube videos specified in order what laws are violated. He's not disclosed details of the content, but they complains and against the US parent companies and not their talent subsidiaries. The ministry will file more such takedown requests to Facebook, Twitter and Google Ask him then to remove more than 3,000 items from their platforms, which content ranging from pornography to criticism of the monarchy. There will be a new batch of over 3,000 items that the ministry gathers all with court orders. They consist of 1,748 items on Facebook, 607 items on YouTube, 261 items on Twitter and over 400,000 items from other platforms. Thailand have a tough less majesty law to prohibit insulting the monarchy. The Computer Crime Act, which outlaws the uploading of hoax or affects national security, also used to prosecute online criticism of the royal family. The United Kingdom Veterinary Charity awards a prestigious gold medal to an African giant poached rat. An African giant pouch rat gives a gold medal for life-saving bravery and devotion to duty by a United Kingdom-based veterinary charity. According to the charity, he has cleared land over the size of 20 football pitches and can search a field the size of a tennis court within 20 minutes. For us, it's very important also that PDSA brings the landmine problem to the attention of the wider public because landmines still terrorize the lives of so many Cambodians and other people all over the world. We hope that we can solve the landmine problem in the next five to ten years. But it needs the engagement and the support of the wider public. That is also why this award is very important for us. According to the PDSA Magawa, whose official job title is Hero Red, has sniffed out 39 landmines and 28 unexploded munitions in his career.
The authority says the gold medal is presented to him for life-saving devotion to duty in the clearance of the deadly landmines in Cambodia. In order to become a recipient of the war, the seven-year-old Rodent was trained by Belgium registered charity Apopo, which is based in Tanzania, in raising animals to detect landmines as well as tuberculosis. Previous animal donors by the charity include dogs, horses, pigeons, and a cat. <laughs> I am very happy and thankful. We will never forget them because I will work in this farm without fear anymore. I would like to say thanks and that I'm just so happy. PDSA says Cambodia is one of the highest number of mine amputees per capita in the world, with more than 40,000. Thailand's government makes recruitment for the unemployed after the economy has been slowed down by the COVID-19. Tens of thousands of Thailands flock to a job expo hunting work as the government offer more than a million positions in an attempt to tackle mounting unemployment in an economy battered by the coronavirus pandemic. We have set up this job expo not only to recruit hundreds of thousands but a million positions. The job offer is part of relief measures as the government introduces a 1.9 trillion bath or $60 billion package to mitigate the outbreak impact, particularly on the key tourist sector. During the COVID-19 pandemic, I got laid off. I used to work for Hong Kong Airlines, but because the company couldn't deal with the cost, so they have to let go of some of the staff. I think with this many people, it reflects a lot of unemployment. Even older people like me, it shows elders have to fight with first jobber, and I think we should give them an opportunity. I believe it's about 50-50 of those got laid off and first jobber who are here today. Recruiters say that applicants, including from postgraduate students and also older people, want to get a job because their economy has been hit by the coronavirus pandemic, originating in Chinese Hubei province at the end of 2019. The age range of people who are applying is quite varied. There are students who just graduate and people who are older and still looking for jobs. The government will help the private sector pay half in hiring 260,000 new graduates for a year under a co-payment scheme. About 1.24 million jobs will offer at the government agencies, private firms and overseas. And they also predict that Southeast Asia's second largest economy could shrink by a record 8.5% this year. So far, Thailand reports 3,522 coronavirus infections. Well, we have reached the end of today's program. Have a nice weekend with your loved ones and see you soon.